$195,000 for a home in Washington, D.C.? Did I just do the worst clickbait of all time? Or is it actually true? Let's find out. your first time to the channel and you want to learn every single thing about living in Washington DC and DC real estate you've come to the right place my name is Bashir and our team gets calls and emails every day from people just like you looking to make a move to the DC area so whether that move is in 10 or 100 days or even next year feel free to shoot us a call text email or schedule a zoom call all contact details are in the description below so 195,000 for a home in DC is true and it's not clickbait. We're gonna be looking at a co-op in this co-op building right here in the neighborhood of Petworth. This is the Hampshire Gardens co-ops in, Pe in the Petworth neighborhood. And I've actually done a more extensive tour of the Petworth uh, neighborhood before. You can check out that video right here if you want a more extensive review of the neighborhood, the different amenities. But just to talk about a few of the amenities here, there's a few coffee shops, local coffee shops, less than a mile away. You have three grocery stores on Georgia Avenue, Safeway, Walmart, and Yes Organic Market. And there are also a few restaurants and things to do a mile away on Upshur Street Northwest. So talking about the con, the co-op, sorry, not a condo, we're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of investing in this type of asset class. Because here's the thing, it's not for everyone. So you really have to do your due diligence before investing in this type of asset class, which I'm gonna assist you with today. And this is just a cheaper option if you wanted to get into the, the real estate market in Washington, D.C. and you were working with a smaller budget, a co-op might be a great option for you. But let's head inside, let's take a look at the unit, and then I'll talk about the pros and cons of co-ops, see if it's worth it for you. But before we do that, let's drive around the block and take a look at the neighborhood itself, and then I'll see you at the condo. The co-op. So this is a lobby, and as we can see, this is a th three-level building, and there's no elevators here, so just the staircase. So right as we walk into the unit, there's a closet to the right, pretty spacious closet. And then we've got these original hardwood floors. Dining area right here, which takes you into the living area. Window units for air conditioning in the winter. And uh, these are the old windows, but they're still in great shape. So 
If it's not broke, I guess you can complete that sentence. Don't fix it. <laughs> Kitchen, have gas stove, quartz countertop. And this is a one bedroom, one bathroom unit. I'll give you that heads up. So let's check out the bedroom. And one special thing about this unit is it has a washer and dryer hookup. I think this is one of the only units in the building or one of the only few that has a washer dryer hookup. So that's a huge plus. The bathroom. We definitely need to get some blinds for that right there because. <laughs> and then we have the bedroom, which is pretty huge. This is a king size bed and it fits really comfortably. Radiators for heat. Closet space. Always gotta love these original doorknobs. So everything in the unit is basically original. Well, not everything, except for the some of the bathroom finishes. This is all the original trim work that's been immaculately restored. So the floors, they're a bit squeaky, but hey, they, they look awesome. They look amazing. So Let's talk numbers. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons to owning a co-op. Now, the first pro that I would say that comes to my mind immediately is affordability. Let's use this one as a prime example. This is only priced at $195,000 for a one bed, one bath, 700 square foot unit. Now, if we were to look at a condo with the same amount of uh, bedroom and bathrooms and same square footage in this neighborhood, it's going to run you for around 350 to 375, depending on the condition. Is it new construction or is it an older condo? It's going to run you anywhere within that range. And also what part of Petworth it's located in, because some areas of Petworth tend to be more pricey than, than other areas. So first thing that comes to mind is affordability. Co-ops usually tend to be on the more affordable side. And this is across all neighborhoods in DC. For the most part, I would say 95% of the time, a one bedroom, one bath co-op in one neighborhood is gonna 90, be 95% of the time cheaper than a one bedroom, one bath co uh, condo in that same neighborhood. The second pro to living in a co-op is they really have a tight knit community. So if you're someone who is huge on community and you would rather live in a building where people are actually social and uh, people say hello to their neighbors, Hey, a co-op might be a perfect place for you because let's compare condos. So most times the management of a condominium building is outsourced to an exterior management companies. So it's not managed by the, the uh, residents who actually live in the building as opposed to co-ops. A lot of the management decisions and the, the, the finances are made the, those decisions are made by the actual residents of the uh, cooperative. I don't know if I told you co-op stood for cooperative, but um, a lot of those decisions are made for by the cooperative members, right? So this just leads to frequent discussions and interactions between the co-op owners. And it's also a plus for owners to be able to make decisions on how their building is run versus leaving it up to an, an outside management company who might sometimes make decisions that you might not necessarily agree with. Now, the last pro of buying a co-op is you're also entitled to the same tax deductions that condominium owners and homeowners are entitled to. Even though in a co-op, when you buy one, you're, you're not buying real property. You're not buying real estate. You're just buying shares in the building, right? So this whole apartment is a share of the building. It's like buying stocks, right? When you buy a piece of Apple, you're not buying Apple from the owner, you're just buying a piece of Apple. It's kind of like the same thing with co-ops. Even though you're not buying real estate, you still get access to those tax deductions, which is better than renting because when you rent, you don't get any of those tax, tax benefits. So before we get into the cons, let's talk about some numbers. Let's talk about what the monthly payment on a co-op like this is gonna cost you every month because 
one of the cons of living in a co-op is the fees tend to be quite high. And we're going to get into that in a second, but I'm just going to run through what you can expect to pay on a $195,000 co-op in DC. So if we were to put 3% down on this con on this co-op, the principal and interest is going to be around 1227 a month. The HOA fees are 976 a month. Homeowners insurance is going to, going to run you around $39 a month and mortgage insurance is gonna run you about $118 a month. If we add all that up, it brings us roughly to around 2,300 a month. And that's what you can expect to pay in rent if you are living in this neighborhood, if you are renting, sorry, in this neighborhood, a one bedroom, one bathroom ap apartment of this size. Now let's quickly talk about those that $976 a month HOA fee because I know that caught your attention. But here's the thing. One thing to keep in mind is with co-ops, a lot of times, more often than not, all your utilities are included in the HOA fees for co-op. So for this co-op, for example, it's included in that is gas, heat, water, trash, and sewer, right? And one other important thing is also property taxes. Usually when you own a home or you own a condo, or let's use a condo, for example, when you own a condo, the property taxes aren't included in the HOA fees. That's usually included in your mortgage. However, when you buy a co-op, you usually pay the property taxes. The property tax taxes are usually included in the HOA fees. And that leads us to the first pro, which is high monthly HOA dues. Now, before you invest in any co-op, I would advise that you get with a competent real estate agent and read through the documents of the association just to see how well the HOA community is managing their finances. You wanna see if they have any outstanding debts, if they, if they're not on top of things financially, because if you invest in the wrong co-op, what could happen over time is your HOA fees tend to increase quite drastically over time if things are being mismanaged. So that's a critical step that you do not want to take lightly. Con number two is co-ops can usually have very strict policies. So things like rental policies and pet policies even. Most co-ops in DC, they usually don't tend to have very strict rules when it comes to animals, cats, dogs, and things like that. But a lot of co-ops have very strict rules when it comes to renting out your unit. So if you bought a co-op and maybe in two or three years you outgrew that unit and you wanted to buy a bigger home, right? But you didn't want to sell the co-op and you wanted to turn that into a rental property. Let's use this building, for example. This building wants to ensure that 85% of the units are occupied by owners and not renters, right? So once they get to that 85% cap, all renting stops. So if you wanted to move out of your unit and turn it into a rental, it's not gonna be able to happen. So you definitely wanna find out what are the rental rules and how lax are they before buying a co-op. Con number three is financing. Now, a co-op is not, buying a co-op is not as easy to obtain financing like if you were buying a condo or a home because most lenders don't lend on co-ops because of certain risks they're not willing to take. So you would really have to find a lender that specializes in lending on this asset class. If you're in the market to buy a co-op, you can definitely reach out to me. We'd be glad to put you in touch with a lender who specializes in co-ops. And last but not least, co-ops have an extremely vigorous approval process. Now, I'm not talking about with the lenders. That's quite easy. I'm talking about with the residents itself, with the board members. So when you buy a co-op, it's not as straightforward as you, you, you're you buying a $200,000 co-op, you apply for a $200,000 loan, and you make the offer, the owner accepts, accepts your offer, and you move in tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. Once you get financing from a lender, you then have to go in front of the board, the board members of the co-op, and they, they basically vet you, right? So they're looking at your files, your finances, your credit history, your back, background checks. They're seeing if you have a job, how long have you been at that job? And so it's almost like an intrusion of privacy. <laughs> but listen, that's just what it takes to be able to get into a co-op, right? So if, you, if something like that is gonna turn you off and you don't think it's worth it, then hey, buying a co-op might not be the best fit for you. But to be able to get into a co-op, that's the process you have to follow. So hope this video was informative and you learned something new about co-ops. If you're in the market to purchase a co-op or a condo or a home within the DC area or you're planning on moving into our beautiful city, feel free to give, uh, give us a call, text or email. Feel free to reach out. All contact details are in the description below. See you in the next video.